When no, I was a kid, probe. did you ever stick a fork in the wall? I don't think so. I mean, that's like the beginning. It's, this is where, like, did you guys ever see your weird science? Okay, weird science in there. This is where you can make anything. Okay, you can't, you haven't made a human being yet, have you? No, we haven't. Okay, but I'm sure he... Scan me. There's a 3D printed 3D scan of me over there somewhere. Yeah, it's in the bag of 3D prints. Is this you? This is me, yeah. I even got the crinkles of my uh, t-shirt that day. Oh my god. <laughs> what have you done, Eric? It looks and like you can see my hair kind of looks like a blob instead instead of a bunch of individual strands since like the smallest feature size would be about that big. He's got like, you know, die. Look at the sizes. What is this? That is, oh, that's a full bridge rectifier. He's got rectifiers and all kinds of electric stuff in here. He's he builds his own uh, guitar pedals and whatnot. And uh, we got 3D printers over here. I mean, this is like a place. This is a place to make stuff. He's Look, he's got car parts on his bed, and we can make anything we want here. Today, we're gonna focus on the- Some electronics and the oscilloscope. Yeah, we're gonna learn how this machine works. Welcome to Eric's Lab. I'm Mr. G, this is Eric, and we're gonna do the oscilloscope today. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so Eric, what are we doing first? So first we want to talk about what is the purpose of an oscilloscope. And if you've ever used a multimeter like this guy right here, you've got a couple different measurement modes. You've got, you know, AC voltage measuring, you've got DC voltage measuring. This will just tell you that a battery is either alive or dead, or, you know, a wall socket is um, at 120 volts, or it's, you know, your power's out or something like that. So these two are your probe leads. This is just to uh, probe onto whatever you want to check. So say you've got a 9-volt battery, you plug it into something, you're not sure if it works. We're going to measure the voltage, and if you look at the side of it, you can see that there's a plus symbol right here. Mm -hmm. So black goes to negative, red goes to plus, and the voltmeter shows us that this thing is 7.92 volts. Believe it or not, eight volts on a nine volt battery is pretty much toast. Wait, 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 Bef this is important. You sure. have to, we have to put this on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could, but it wouldn't be that comfortable. Hold this for a second. Million. That's a, the way to do it with a mm -hmm. voltmeter, but if you didn't have that, you literally could go like this. Oh. <laughs> Dude, you gotta do it. All right, fine. <laughs> it's the worst influence. Nah, that's not too bad. It got you, right? It got a little bit. It's yeah. a little tingly. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so th so that if you really want, if that's if you you can use this on your tongue if you want to see if it if it has juice, but if you want to measure and you need numbers, then use this. Now, what is the difference between this and this? This so this guy just lets you see the uh, voltage or amperage. This guy will let you see voltage plotted against time. Interesting. Now, yep. Cool. So that when that thing actually when you shorted it out and the and the amps dipped, we would see that in a time we chart. We would right? see that. Yeah, we would see the voltage dip over time. All right. So a couple things to talk about here. We've got one microsecond. That means that's how long these horizontal time divisions are. So this thing, I think, is 12 microseconds across. Is this down here five volts? That's our channel one uh, vertical voltage. That means each one of these boxes, the full square is five volts. There's some little divisions in there so you can discern more. But this is showing us, okay, we've got eight volts on the battery since that's our maximum voltage level that we're measuring right there. And okay. what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a single shot. So now it's waiting for a trigger. And we'll explain triggering later again. But we were talking about how the battery, when you touch it and you short it out, it's not gonna be able to provide the voltage as much once you try to short it. So G, hop back up on the oscilloscope. I'm gonna short the battery and we're gonna see what happens. Whoa. Yep, so that's that battery dip voltage that we're talking about. So we saw the voltage um, on the battery. We can do that again, just show you where it goes back down to zero volts when you right. short it out. Mm -hmm. um, but this shows you in real time how long it's actually taking for that voltage to deplete after we measure it. So this is the kind of cool thing about an oscilloscope is you can see the voltage over time. Voltage over time. Voltage over time. That's really what we're measuring here. That's amazing. All right. Cool, right? Okay, so basically when we first started, we did the the voltmeter and we checked it out there, but you don't see the time that it made it started high and then it dipped below. Uh, now, as he said, each one of these boxes is five volts and then how, how much time was that? So that's only like one box or so, right? Yeah, basically. One so microsecond or one so. One microsecond and it dropped down. How much did it drop? It dropped all the way down to, so we can actually measure what V-min is on the page. 1.4 volts is the lowest voltage probably right out here. And there's a bunch of different um, things that you can the have it automatically measure for you. 1.4 voltage drop. No, no, down to 1.4 volts from 8 volts. Oh, really? Yeah, so that right there is probably about 1.4 volts. Oh, this dropped a lot. It dropped all the way down, yeah, because you're shorting oh, the battery. Oh, because he shorted it. Did yep, you yep. run a so wire across So we have this wire there? right here, this white wire. Oh. All that I did was just touch this, 
right there to the other lead. Exactly. Okay, so it knew, the machine knew to, uh, to start recording when it saw like a change. So this side right here is the position side, the vertical side. You see it's got those little vertical arrows there. This side right here is the horizontal scale. Um, so this has got horizontal arrows going back and forth. So what we want to do is say we want to zoom in a little bit more on this specific voltage. So you can do a vertical zoom like that so we can see what's mm, going on vertically. Okay. We're going to do a horizontal zoom as well. Oh, so if we want to so see a little more bit more. Time. Exactly. Oh, I and see. And we can move the waveform. Oops, sorry, that's our trigger. We can move the waveform around as well. We can do it with these knobs. And really what it is is this one's your zoom. This one's your position. So you can move it back and forth with this knob up here. Oh, okay. And you can move it up and down with this so knob up top. So let me try. Top. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is my up-down position. Is that right? Yep. And then this one here, oh, this is position going horizontal. Exactly. So I want to move around. The skinny ones are X, Y this position, and the big ones are oh, zoom. Oh, look at this. Isn't that yep. cool? Whoa. So it's almost flat. Oh, look, there's some interesting mm -hmm. things that happened. Yep. And what's this? Vertical. Yep. Interesting. You can get really detailed information based on the time and what's happening. So you can spread it out. You can go this way. It's almost like having an Excel sheet based on time of exactly what's happening to your voltage with the formulas all plugged in already. And it's on a chart, so you can use quick access or you could go detailed. It's pretty amazing. Tell but, you what, the fun part about this thing is we can just stick it in the power outlet and you know, it's designed to measure voltage. Do you want to stick it in the power outlet? Yeah, of course. What's, all right, well, here. It, with a fork? No, the, the <laughs> when no, I was a kid, probe. did you ever stick a fork in the wall? Hey guys, future Eric here. So I realized I went on like a long safety spiel and we didn't need that. Basically, just be careful. Don't be an idiot. Don't electrocute yourself. This video doesn't contain enough information to get you guys fully schooled up on safety. If you want to replicate this, do a little bit of research. Our video is not enough to get you up to speed. That said, back to the video. Yes. Yep, black to black. No, no, no. The, the, the back end of it screws onto the probes. Here? No, no, no. On the probes. Oh. Here? Yep. Yeah, see, it's got threads. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Are you filming? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> see, when you come to Eric's lab, you learn. That's awesome. Okay, going to white? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There's one. Okay, I'm on. All right, what do we got? 118. 118 volts. Okay. So this can, can do some uh, more advanced measurements as well. So you can really? also measure, uh, yep, so if you want to measure frequency, okay. there's a way where you can push this button here and it'll show you what frequency it is. So our 60 hertz, which oh, is right. what household power is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see Hertz, that, which means it goes up and down 60 times or up, one, two, how do you count that? So, so one hertz would be like if you start from here and you went to here. So it's where, where that cross point goes, mm. where you cross through to negative up to where you cross back through the negative. Oh, that's so, one cycle. So there to there. Right? That's one That's one. Hertz. There you go. Yep. So that's down, up, down. Yeah, exactly. So back to zero. Exactly. So from here to back here. Back to zero twice, hertz. actually. Exactly. Right? Sorry, from negative to positive. So the next time you go from negative to positive, that's one cycle. And one hertz is one cycle per second. So 60 hertz means it's going through this cycle 60 times per second, which is why if you see in the period down here at the bottom right, the period is 16.7 milliseconds. That's how long it'll actually take to go through one cycle, and it does it 60 times per second. So basically, to sum it up, we have like a static view of it through the, uh, through the voltmeter, okay? which gave us, it tells us 60 hertz, but it doesn't show us, it doesn't show us the wave. And when we're talking about the wave, AC is alternating current. So that means the positive side actually goes to the negative side and then back to the positive. It, when it starts, it gets higher and higher and higher up to, I guess, 118 volts. 170 volts, actually. 120 volts, quote unquote, is actually RMS. But if you, uh, that's What's the thing RMS? that I was talking, root mean square. It's how you average out AC to figure out what its DC equivalent is. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's actually higher? So yeah, the peak voltage is not the same as the RMS voltage. Interesting. Like if you were able to put this through a rectifier, you would actually be able to get like 170-ish volts really? out of it if you weren't pulling current out no of it. Kidding. Yeah. So yep, up yep. here? Here, tell you what, check it out, VMAX, 166, VMIN, minus 164. No kidding. Yeah. I never knew that. I thought it went to 120. Now, I noticed that in the main video, you couldn't see it, so look down here at the left as well. You could see that the maximum voltage that we hit is 166 volts, and the minimum voltage we hit is minus 164 volts, showing the AC nature of this wave. But the RMS voltage, if this was to be equivalent to a DC voltage, it's 120 volts. So it's the same power as you would get. That's hooking this up to a 100 volt DC source. This is why I'm here. This is awesome. 
Okay, so it goes past it and then comes back down to zero and then back up and mm -hmm. it just keeps going like that. Why they give you AC is a whole other video. So we've got a new experimental setup. So we've got the signal generator hooked into the oscilloscope giving us a wave so we can talk about triggering. So G, come on in. So this little section over here is the trigger menu. So what we also have to do is we have to pick where we're actually going to tell the oscilloscope to start. So this little T right here, there's a little uh, handle. And then there's this second T up here where the measurement starts. So where that one on the right and the top one intersect is where the line will actually start. And you'll see it as it moves up and down. Where we want it to start measuring the actual signal. And that's where it actually, you know, is that the clicks orange and turns line? on. It's kind of like when you're hitting your sh shutter button on your phone, on your camera, but you're tying it to a voltage. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this knob right here will move our trigger level up and down. So we've got, what is it, 20 or so volts peak to peak coming in? And we can move it up and down. What we can also do is we can change the direction. So right now we're triggering when it's going positive. See the slope positive? Oh, here? Well, we can, yep, right there. Okay. So it's going through like this. If we flip that to negative, now it's going to be going down through our trigger point right mm. there. Yeah. Huh. So basically you're just setting, you know, at what voltage you want the machine to start measuring. Got it. Okay. Very cool. And you adjust that here. Yep. So the last piece as well is this uh, up here, this run stop button here. So what that is, is it's basically live measuring. It's continuously triggering. Um, so it, it's continuously triggering and looking for different signals. But you can also do like what we did before with the battery. is because the battery is not AC. It's not continuously inputting a waveform that should be the same every time. It's a single event that we want to capture of the battery voltage dropping once. Oh, it's I see. Versus... It's not going to in some cyclical manner like this. This is a perfect waveform in that, you know, it's cyclical. So it's continuously happening. If I disconnect the probe, it'll stop. We're going to go and do a single shot of this now, where we go and we connect the probe and we do a single shot of it. Now, the difference is it took a single picture, and now we can mess with that picture. So the probe is disconnected. We're now it's stopped. See, it's red, because we did a, what's called a single shot, and we can zoom out, we can zoom in, we can do all those things that we were doing before. So that's two different run modes that you can do. If you're trying to capture something live, you're seeing some data go over the line, you leave it in that auto mode. But if you want to capture a single event and then look at it and you know zoom it in, zoom it out, that kind of stuff. Analyze it, you do a single shot. So one last thing to note about the probes. This is actually the ground of the probe and this is what's actually measuring the signal. So you got to connect both of them for the probes to work properly. And now that Ron has learned how to use an oscilloscope, I'm going to let him set up that same battery shot that we did before. So I'm going to take the positive side uh, and hook that to the battery. Okay, so positive side's here. So now I'm going to take this and it's kind of like a pullback type of reveal the the, the hook. There, I'm on there. Now this one goes on the negative side. Okay, she's ready. So I got the probe, uh, which has like a little grippy thing, connected to positive side. This is the negative side. Now I'm going to take my wire that's going to be my short wire. Yep, right? and just hook it up to the ground wire for now. Just kind of clip it onto the other clip. Okay, that and then well. this I can just touch to the to the other side, to the positive, which will then short it. Okay, so we have our setup. I've got my short, I've got my, my probe on the positive and my, my negative ground there. And now, if you go to the scope, I can't see where the top of my voltage is. So I'm going to zoom out, and there we are. That's so good. each one is now five. And so five, and then almost, uh, where does it say the top? Oh, I see. Max is 8.2 volts. So I'm at 8.2, which is a box and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the next thing is I'm going to set up my single shot, right? Yep. You're triggering. My trigger. Okay. So single. Oh, it, not yet. Oh. Go back, run stop. Run stop. And again. And again. And you got to use the trigger menu to set up the trigger first. Oh, okay. Sorry. So let's go to the trigger menu that's right here. Okay. And I go to the menu. Okay, and also, and I want to know whether I'm going to trigger if it goes up or trigger down. And right now, it's going up. Is that right? Yep. Oh, okay. But we're expecting down because right, we're going to short because out a battery. Right, because once you short it, it's going to go down. So I want, I'm going to change this one here, right? Yep. Okay. And if you could see, now do I have to do it? You can click it to drop it down one. Okay, so now, then... it's, now it's going to trigger on the down. Mm -hmm. Do you guys play stocks? This is kind of like, like. Tr uh, day trading. <laughs> so you can, yep. Oops. Er, yeah, keep that pushing it until you anyway. get back, okay. and then push this button here to select this it. one. Yep. Okay. Each oscilloscope is different, and 
Setting up a shot is a lot about what your expectations will be, your voltage, your triggering. You basically make a hypothesis of what's going to happen electrically and set it up to measure that and then see what happens. Right. So okay. set the trigger level next. Okay, so I'm going to set the trigger level now. Uh, and so here's your trigger level right here. And I see the, the, the T right here. That's your trigger level. And I think I want to trigger it real close. So can I change That's my good scale? Right there, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll get pick, bang it. You can see the voltage what it's actually at right here. Oh, okay. Here's my trigger level. I know that my max right now is 8.2. So I'm going to bring it right next to. Uh, you don't want to go too high, otherwise it'll accidentally trigger. Put oh. it to like 7.5 or so should be good. Okay. So 7.5, and if it triggers, it'll capture the whole thing. It won't. Ha it won't just be after the event. Is that right? So it'll it'll trigger at this point, but it'll capture everything before and after it, as oh. far as the time scale so goes. So that's why we get the entire event. Exactly. Oh, and what what'll cool. happen too is you can actually set the time scale as well. So right now we're capturing five milliseconds squared. So we'll get. 60 milliseconds, or no, sorry, 30 milliseconds of time across because it's 12 boxes and that's across. Each no, one. that's it, is 60 milliseconds across. Okay. So, so we'll get 60 milliseconds of time and we can zoom in, but this is going to happen pretty quick. So you can even zoom that into like one millisecond or so okay. with your horizontal. So in the middle. So see how that changes to 100 microseconds, 50 microseconds? Oh, yes. So that's changing how long of a time slice we're so going to capture. So that's here. You're seeing the two microseconds or two milliseconds one, now. Milliseconds, yep. one. Right? Mm hmm Okay, and uh, what do we want to be at? Let's say one millisecond, because that'll be one millisecond per box. We'll okay. capture 12 milliseconds of signal. Perfect. This is going to happen very fast. Yep. So So now you push signal shot to tell, okay, look for a, sig a, signal, a single shot. Okay. Boom. We are armed. Yep, we're armed. We are armed. Now I'm going to trigger the event. Yep. Are you ready? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Trigger. There Whoa. you go. And I only had to trigger it once, and look what happened. Mm -hmm. Look at that voltage drop from me connecting it and making a short. So now I want to change the scale so I can see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's up down. Yep. Is that the, the right middle one? one's the horizontal one? Okay. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. There we go. And, and I can move the over. position. Yep. Exactly. And I'm going to move this over to a more a better spot for it in the center, and I'm going to go even. Oops. There. That's much better, and I'm now moving it over so I can see it again, and that's what it looks like across one, how many spaces is each one? One, one microsecond. Microsecond. Now. Okay, and then it kind of, you know, it's a big, it's a, it's a short event, but if you really dig in there, it actually does have like a slope. Cool. All right, and uh, if you trade stocks and day trading, it's kind of like a stop limit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I recently got into stocks a little bit, and you could set, you could say, all right, well, if the stock goes here, then I want to sell it here. Or if stock goes up, you could set it, sell it there. And so what this is is basically like almost like trading stocks, but instead you're saying when to trigger your re recording event. That's exactly it. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think it's good. There's a lot more to cover, but we're going to go to a different video for that. Um, this is yeah, the overview. This is the overview for anybody that wants to understand, you know, how it works, what it's supposed to do. Um, if you want to learn how to, like, properly actually set one of these up, we'll do another video covering mm -hmm. in those details. But, yeah, this and is just about oscilloscopes, what they do, how they're useful. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mr. G, and this is Eric, and we're in Eric's lab today. So this is going to be a collaboration. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. But in the future, we, and thank you, sir. Want to do a chest bump? Sure, that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time. Okay, see you later.